Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be reacting to Victor the Machine Herald. If this is your first time checking out the channel, we're going to take a look at Victor's biography and story first. We'll move on to the gameplay abilities, check out any cinematics he might have. Then we'll look at the skins, fandom wiki, and the voice lines at the very end of the video. So obviously, Victor is a champion and character in the Arcane show. So this is kind of like going to be an idea of what we're going to get of Victor in the future. And I'm definitely going to be reacting to this in the sense of I'm going to look for a lot of these clues and things in the second season of Arcane. We obviously have uh, a lot of things happening to Victor in the first season. I'll be very curious to see what happens to him in the second season and how he gets to be whatever this image of Victor is in the future seasons of Arcane. Starting off with a quote, it says, A mechanized heart never misses a beat and never falters with emotion. So why would anyone trust their life to a fragile muscle of flesh and blood? Okay, and we're already kind of getting that idea of Victor, I would say, towards the second half of the first season. You know, he's losing his body. His body's dying on him. And he starts messing with the Hextech stuff, right? And, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens to him in the second season for sure. Roll is Mage. Region is Zaun, right? We know he's originally from Zaun. I recall this because there's an encounter between him and Jace towards like episode eight or something like that, where like Jace kind of talks bad about Zaun. And then Victor's like, you realize I'm from Zaun, right? Anyways, so we have related champions. We have Blitzcrank. We have Urgot. We have Camille. We have Jace. We have Echo and oh last oh and oriana and dr mundo we have a lot of people so the first you know a lot of these just make sense to me because they're built over zon related i don't know anything about blitzcrank i don't know anything about oriana and i don't know anything about dr mundo so there's a lot of relationships here with victor the herald of a new age of technology victor has devoted his life to the advancement of humankind an idealist who seeks to lift the people of zon to a new level of understanding he believes that only by embracing a glorious evolution of a technology can humanity's full potential be realized. With a body augmented by steel and science, Victor is zealous in his pursuit of this bright future. All right, and so I can already tell by this, right, like with this upcoming war, and I don't know if they'll end up changing things with Victor here in the near future because of the show, but like in this upcoming war that we're obviously probably going to be getting between Piltover and Zaun, Victor's going to go to Zon's side and start helping. Z I don't know, right? Like, I, I guess we could never know what they're going to write into the second season of Arcane. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Is he going to be like loyal to Zon, you think? Or is he going to be loyal to Piltover? Or will he just be loyal to himself? Who knows? All right, let's dive into the biography. Victor was born in Zon on the borders of the Entrasol level and encouraged by his artisan parents, discovered a passion for invention and building. He devoted every waking minute to his studies, hating to interrupt his work, even to eat or sleep. Even worse was having to rapidly relocate if there was a nearby chemical spill, accidental detonation, or incoming chem cloud. Abandoning his work even for a short time was anathema to Victor. Anathema, never heard of that word. In a bid to impose a level of order and certainty on this world, on his world, Victor researched Zahn's many accidents and came to realize that almost all of them were the result of human error, not mechanical failure. He offered his services to the local businesses developing inventions that made them far safer working environments. Most turned him away, but one, the Frederson Chemforge, took a chance on this earnest young man. Now, I'm wondering if this origin story is obviously going to be like somewhat outdated, maybe because of the show and like, I guess, Arcane being canon now. Um, I, so there might be like some conflicting stuff with this biography and story. You guys let me know, though, of course. And another question to pose to you guys, like, let's say, I don't know if you guys have played Cyberpunk, but, you know, in the Cyberpunk world, there's a lot of like augmentations and human augmentations that people have. Sounds like Victor's kind of going that route. If it was a normalized thing, do you guys think you would get like human augmentations and stuff? Victor's inventions and automation reduced the number of accidents in the forge to zero within a month. Soon other establishments sought his work and Victor's designs became common in Zon, improving production with every innovation that removed human error from a process. Eventually at the age of 19, he was surprised to be offered a place in Zon's prestigious Academy of Techmaturgy. But Victor's work had attracted the eye of Professor Stanwyck of Piltover, who convinced him to leave Zon and travel to Piltover's academy instead. Okay, so we do have that in the show. Technically, he's up in Piltover. There, he could work in the most advanced laboratories and gain access to all the resources the City of Progress could offer. Thrilled to be singled out, Victor accepted his offer and took up residence in Piltover, where he refined his craft and sought to perfect his theorems in ways that would be uh, benefit everyone. Victor worked with Piltover's best and brightest, including an insufferable genius named Jace. The two were equally matched in intellect, but where Victor was methodical, logical, and thorough, Jace was um, uh, flamboyant and arrogant. The two worked together frequently, but never truly became friends. Often the two would butt heads over their perceptions of intuition versus logic in the process of invention, but a level of mutual respect developed as each saw the flawed brilliance in the other. Well, we we did see, 
yeah i guess they weren't maybe truly friends but we definitely saw like a respect between one another in the show you know there's also like the two i love the two parallels that we got in the show of you know jace was ready to jump off the the edge and victor kind of stopped him and then later on in the season we see the same thing in reverse so yeah they definitely like respect each other's knowledge and logic and and just intellect i would say but they definitely have differing viewpoints, and you see that in the show. In the midst of his studies in Piltover, a major chem spill devastated entire districts of Zahn, and Victor returned home to offer his help in the rescue efforts. Ooh, I wonder if that's going to be something that happens in the show, but probably not. By grafting a sophisticated series of cognitive loops upon existing Automa technology, he crafted a custom-built golem, Blitzcrank, to help in the cleanup. Oh my goodness. So wait a minute. Blitzcrank was created by Victor. And now I'm wondering, are we going to get a Blitzcrank in Arcane at some point? Blitzcrank was instrumental in saving scores of lives and appeared to develop a level of sentience beyond anything Victor had envisioned. Even with the spill contained, Victor remained in Zaun to help those inflict afflicted by the released toxins. With the Golem's help, he attempted to use this techmaturgical brilliance to save those whose lives had been blighted by the spill. Their attempt was ultimately unsuccessful in preventing more deaths and the two parted ways. Though Victor was distraught at the loss of life in Zahn, the work taught him a great deal about the merging of human anatomy with technology and how mortal anatomy could be enhanced with technology. Yeah, this seems like something that possibly could have happened in season one, but maybe they'll save it for season two. I don't know. When Victor returned to Piltover weeks later, it was to find that Professor Stanwyck had held a symposium on Blitzcrank and presented Victor's researches as his own. Oh, Victor lodged formal complaints with the masters of the college, but his impassioned claim that he had designed Blitzcrank fell on deaf ears. He turned to Jace to verify his claims, but his fellow student refused to speak up, further widening the rift between them, and the matter was decided in Professor Stanwyck's favor. Wow, that's shitty. Bitter but resigned, Victor returned to his studies, knowing that his ultimate goal of making people's lives better and enhancing humanity was more important than one stolen project and a bruised ego. He continued to excel, finding ever new ways to eliminate human error and weakness from his work, a facet of his researches that came to dominate his thinking. He saw human involvement in any part of a process as a grossly inefficient aberration, a view that put him at odds with a great many of his fellow students and professors who saw the very things Victor sought to remove as the source of human ingenuity and creativity. So what we're getting here is Victor's kind of like, um, I mean, he's a little bit of a rebel and he thinks in different ways than everybody else. He's clearly smart, but he's almost thinking in ways that like, I don't want to say borderline are unethical, but just like the idea of like, you know, augmenting the human body and stuff probably in the world of Runeterra is just not normal amongst amongst Piltover and Zahn, so yeah. This came to a head during a reluctant cal collaboration with Jace to improve the diving suits used to keep Piltover's docks clear of underwater debris and lingering chemical waste. Victor and Jace's enhanced suits allowed the wearer to go deeper, remain underwater for longer, and lift heavier weights. But many wearers claimed they saw phantom corpse lights in the depths or suffered from chem-induced hallucination. Oh, well, that's scary. When divers, experienced, when divers experienced such symptoms, they panicked and often got themselves or their fellow divers killed. Victor saw the problem was not technical, but with the wearer's nerves unraveling in the inky, inky depths. So it was human error is what he's saying. He devised a chem shunt helm that allowed an operator on the surface to bypass the wearer's fear response and effectively control the diver. A heated discussion between Victor and Jace on free will and mental enslavement turned bitter, almost violent, and the two vowed never to work together again. Yeah, I'm really wanting to see the relationship between these two in the future. Are they straight up just enemies? I feel like it's leading towards these two just being enemies. Jace reported the incident to the college masters and Victor was censured for violating basic human dignity, though in his eyes, his work would have saved many lives. He was expelled from the college and retreated to his old laboratory in Zahn, disgusted by the narrow-minded perceptions of Piltover's inhabitants. Alone in the depths, Victor sank into a deep depression, enduring a traumatic period of introspection for many weeks. He wrestled with the ethical dilemma he now faced, finding that once again human emotion and weakness had stood in his way. He had been trying to help to enhance people beyond their natural capabilities to avoid error and save lives. Revelation came when he realized that he too had succumbed to such emotions, allowing his naive belief that good intentions could overcome ingrained prejudice to blind him to human failings. Yo, he's having like multiple examples of why like the human emotion and human error are like in the way almost and so i almost don't blame victor you know and he's doing it to try to save lives so i don't know victor knew he could not expect others to follow where he did not go first so in secret he operated on himself to remove those parts of his flesh and psyche that relied upon or were in inhibited by emotion okay we haven't had anything that's like taking away his emotion in the show 
But obviously, you know, with the ailments that he has in the show, which it hasn't been mentioned in this really, is, you know, that's that's a core part of his character in the show. When the surgery was done, almost no trace of the young man who had traveled to Piltover remained. He had supplanted the majority of his anatomy with mechanical augmentations, but his personality had also changed. His idealistic hope to better society was refined into an obsession with what he called the glorious evolution. Victor now saw himself as the pioneer of Valorant's future, an idealized dream where man would renounce flesh in favor of superior Hextech augmentations. This would free humanity from fatal errors and suffering, though Victor knew it was a task that would not be completed easily or quickly. He threw himself into this great work with a vengeance. He used technological augmentations to help rebuild Zonites injured in accidents, perfected breathing mechanisms, and worked tirelessly to reduce human inefficiency by decoupling physicality from emotion. His work saved hundreds of lives, yet seeking Victor's help could be dangerous, as his solutions often brought unexpected consequences. But if you were desperate, Victor was the man you went to. Summon Zon, hearing fragments of his philosophy and the seeing of the successes of his work, saw him as a messianic figure. Wow, okay. Victor couldn't care less for them, viewing their quasi-religious cults as an aberration, yet another reason to eliminate emotional foibles and the belief in that which could not be empirically proven. Wow, he becomes such a crazy figure in, in Zon and helping people with augments and helping their injuries that like a cult almost forms or does form and he's like, no, I don't care about any of that. Like, that's just another human emotion thing. We need to become more robotic. After a toxic event in the sump saw hundreds of men and women in a factory wood transformed into rabid psychotics, Victor was forced to use a powerful soporific to sedate the victims and bring them back to his labs to try and undo the damage. Toxins had begun to eat away portions of their brains, but Victor was able to slow the degenerative process by opening up their craniums and employing machinery to slowly filter the bloodstreams of poison. The technology available to him wasn't up to the task, and Victor knew many people were going to die unless he found a way to greatly enhance his purgative machinery. As he fought to save these people, he detected a surge in Hextech energy from Piltover and saw immediately that this could give him the power he needed. He followed the powerful energy surge to its source, Jace's lab. Okay, so yeah, they're they're teeing this up to be like Jace and Victor are going to be huge rivals, right? Victor demanded Jace hand over the source of this power, a pulsing crystal from the Shurimin Desert, but his former colleague refused, leaving Victor no option but to take it by force. He returned to Zon and hooked the strange crystal to his machinery, readying a steam golem host for each afflicted person in case their body gave under the stress of the procedure. Powered by the new crystal, Victor's machines went to work and gradually the damage from the toxins began to reverse. His work would save these people in a manner of speaking, and had Victor retained more than a fragment of his humanity, he might have celebrated. Oh, wow. He didn't even celebrate because he basically had like no emotion anymore. As it was, the bare scent of a smile was all he allowed himself. Before the process could complete, a vengeful Jace burst in and started smashing the laboratory with an energized hammer. Knowing an arrogant fool like Jace would never listen to reason, Victor ordered the automatons to kill Jace. Whoop, yep, here we go. The battle was ferocious and only ended when Jace shattered the crystal Victor had taken, bringing the entire warehouse down in an avalanche of steel and stone, thus ending the existence of those Victor was trying to save. And for this, Jace returned to Piltover, fetid as a hero. Yeah, I okay, so this here with like Victor going to Zon to help people with his augmentation and then Jace like stopping it, basically, I can definitely see this happening in season two. Victor escaped the destruction of the laboratory and returned to his mission of bettering humanity by ridding it of its destructive emotional impulses. In Victor's mind, Jace's impetuous attack only proved the truth of his cause and strengthened his desire to unburden humanity of the failings of the flesh. Victor did send chem augmented thugs to raid Jace's laboratory not long afterward. This was, Victor told himself, not for revenge, but to learn if there were any more shards of the Shuriman crystal he could use for the advancement of mankind. While like even the emotion of getting revenge is just gone from him. The raid was unsuccessful, however, and Victor thought no more of Jace. Wow, this final sentence, Victor thought no more of Jace. Instead, he intensified his efforts to find ways in which humanity could be shepherded beyond their emotional weaknesses and brought into a new, more reasoned stage of their evolution. Such researches sometimes transgress the boundaries of what we considered ethical in Piltover and Zon, but they are all necessary steps in bringing about Victor's glorious evolution. Wow, I really want to see this played out in Arcane. And man, Victor is going to be like a super tragic character to just see him. Like we haven't seen any of like the emotion part of that, like 
evolution happen yet in the show. It's very, very early on. It's just more like physical ailments and wanting to help people with like injuries and stuff. But I wonder if we're going to start to see like his idea of emotions just being like a, something that we need to get rid of and we need to augment everybody's brain, augment every part of the human flesh and body and just like get rid of all that stuff because they're all weaknesses. Very long biography first off but a very good one and it adds a lot to Victor's story and what I'm going to expect in the future seasons of Arcane and also a little bit to Jace in the sense of like maybe we know what's going to happen with him and Victor in the future so very cool. Let's go ahead and read the story. All right the story is called House on Emberflit Alley. Victor's third arm emitted a thin ray of light that welded metal into his left arm with steady precision. The smell of burning flesh no longer bothered him nor did the sight of his left wrist splayed open veins and sinewy muscle fused with mechanical augments. He did not wince. Instead, he felt a sense of achievement gazing at the seamless blend of synthetic and organic materials. Wow. I mean, so this story is basically him like gone down the rabbit hole very far. And yeah, we have the mention of the third arm that I've seen in the splash arm. The sound of children shouting gave Victor pause. Rarely did anyone venture down the fog bound confines of Emberflit Alley. He had chosen this location for that very reason. He preferred not to be interrupted. Keeping his left arm immobile, Victor adjusted a silver dial on his iridoscope. The device contained a series of mirrored lenses that angled light to allow him full view of the street outside his laboratory. Several children were violently shoving a malnourished boy toward Victor's raw iron gates. I doubt Naf will last a minute in there, said a girl with imitation gemstones embedded above her eyes. I bet he comes back with a brass head, said a boy with a shock of red hair. Maybe then his brain won't be as dull as the gray. You better return with something we can sell or we'll be the ones to give you a new head, said the largest one, grabbing the small boy by the neck and forcing him forward. The other children backed away, watching. The young boy trembled as he approached the towering gate, which screeched as he pushed it open. He passed the front door encrusted with interlocking gears and shimmied through an open window. An alarm blared as he fell to the floor. Victor sighed and pressed a switch that quieted the ringing. I love that's the extent of Victor's emotion. He just sighs. The skinny boy stared at his new environment. Glass jars containing organic and metal organs floating in green fluid lined the walls. A leather gurney stained with blood upon which lay a mechanized drill sat in the center of the chamber. Dozens of automatons stood motionless against every wall. To Victor, his laboratory was a sanctuary for his most creative and vital experiments, but he could imagine it might seem frightening to a child. The boy's eyes widened in shock when he saw Victor at his workbench, arms splayed open on the table. He ducked behind a nearby crate. You will not learn anything from that box, child, said Victor, but on top of it, you would find a bone chisel. Hand it to me, please. A trembling... Oh, are we going to get like Victor's um, assistant from this interaction here? A trembling hand reached to the top of the crate and grasped the handle of the rusted metal tool. The chisel slid across the floor to Victor, who picked it up. Thank you, said Victor, who wiped off the instrument and continued work on his arm. Victor heard the boy's rapid breathing. I'm replacing the twisting flexor tendons, ahem, the broken mechanism in my wrist, Victor said, reaching into his arm to adjust a bolt. Would you like to watch? Wow, interesting. So he changes it from the human aspect of it to the robotic augmentation part of it. Like he, he corrects himself. It's a little interesting that he does that. Maybe we'll dive more into that later. The boy peeked his head around the crate. Doesn't it hurt, said the boy. No, said Victor. When one eliminates the anticipation and fear of pain, it becomes entirely bearable. Oh, it also helps that my arm is completely mechanized. See for yourself. The boy stepped away from the crate and sat across from Victor without a word, eyes fixed on his arm. Victor resumed welding a new bolt drive onto the tendons beneath his skin. When he had finished, he sealed the flaps of dermis into his arm. He drew the beam of light across the seam, cauterizing his flesh and fusing the incision. I want to know more about this, this laser arm. That's probably the coolest aspect so far. <laughs> Why did you do that? The boy asked. Didn't your arm work fine as it was? Do you know what humanity's greatest weakness is? No, said the boy. Humans consistently ignore the endless infinity of possibilities in favor of maintaining the status quo. That's a that's a that's a sentence to ponder there, I feel like. The boy gave him a blank stare. People fear change, Victor said. I 1000% agree with that. They settle with fine when they could have exceptional. Wow. I I love that as like a voice line even. Victor walked to his stovetop. He mixed a blend of dark powder and done pork cream into a saucepan, heating the liquid with his laser. Would you like a glass of sweet milk, said Victor, a weakness of mine, but I have always enjoyed the anise flavor. Um, you're not going to saw off my head and replace it with a metal one? Uh, is that what they think of me now, Victor asked. Pretty much, said the boy. I heard one kid had theirs replaced just because they had a cough. Did you get this information directly, said Victor? No, it was my neighbor Burma's cousin or uncle or something like that. Ah, uh, well, in that case, would replacing someone's head even get rid of a cough, asked the boy. 
Now you're asking the right question, said Victor. No, I imagine it would not be much of an upgrade. Coughing stems from the lungs, you see. And to your earlier point, I'm not going to saw your head off and replace it with a metal one. Unless, of course, you want that. Excuse me, unless, of course, you want that. No thanks, said the boy. Victor poured the thick liquid into two mugs and passed one to the boy, who stared longingly at the hot drink. It is not drugged, said Victor, and took a sip from his own mug. The boy gulped down the sweet milk. <laughs> the fact that he has to say it is not drugged, I would not drink it. Are the others still watching outside, said the boy through stained teeth. Victor glanced through his iridoscope. The three children were still waiting by the front entrance. Indeed they are. Do you wish to give them a scare, Victor said. The boy's eyes light, uh, lit up and he nodded. Oh, that's fun. I love that Victor still wanting to do something like this, though. And he's like just being nice to the kid. Victor handed him a sonophone and said, scream as loud as you can into this. The boy gave an exaggerated blood curdling shriek into the sonophone. It echoed along Emberfoot Alley and the other children jumped in terror, quickly scattering to the hide, uh, scattering to hide. The boy looked at Victor and grinned. I find that fear is more often than not a limiting emotion, said Victor. Tell me something that scares you, for example. Hmm. The Chem Barons. Really? The Chem Barons are feared because they project an air of dominance and often the threat of violence. If one, if no one feared them, people would stand up to them, and then where would their power go? Uh, away, exactly. Think of how many Chem Barons exist compared to how many people live in Zon. Fear is used by the powerful few to control the weak because they understand how fear works. If someone can manipulate your emotions, they can control you. You know, there's some points that Victor's making that I honestly agree with in this story. Uh, but obviously, you know, he definitely probably goes too far. I guess that makes sense, but I'm still afraid of them, said the boy. Of course you are. Patterns of fear are carved deep into your, every, uh, into your very flesh. Steel, however, has no such weakness. Victor retrieved a vial containing minuscule silver beads floating in milky fluid. That is where I may be able to assist, he said. I have developed an augmentation that eliminates fear altogether. I could let you try it out for a short time. Mm, the emotion of fear, though, can be a good thing in terms of survival, though. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a reason to actually maintain the emotion of fear. I'm just saying. How short? The implant will dissolve in 20 minutes. You sure it's not permanent? It can be, but not this one. You might find that without fear, your friends out there lose their grip. Bullies feed on fear, you see, and without it, they will starve. The boy nursed his drink, considering the offer. After a moment, he nodded to Victor, who inserted a thin needle into the vial and injected one of the silver beads into the skin behind his ear. This kid is being... I mean, this kid's just... He's like, sure, stick a needle in me, dude. Let's go for it. Sure, I'll drink that milk that you say is not drugged. The boy shuddered for a moment. Then he smiled. Do you feel your weakness falling away? Victor asked. Oh, yes, said the boy. Victor walked him to the door and twisted a dial to unlock it before waving him out. Remember, you can always return if you wish for a more permanent solution. Wow, okay. The wave of fog created a ghostly silhouette around the boy as he emerged from the laboratory. Victor returned to his workbench to watch the experiment through his iridoscope. Ember Flit Alley was empty, but as soon as the boy walked out, his companions emerged. Where's our souvenir? asked the red-haired boy. Doesn't seem like little Naf has held up his end of the deal, said the girl. Guess we have to punish him, added the large boy. We did promise him a new head today, after all. Don't you touch me, said Naf. He raised himself to his tallest height. The bully reached for Naf's neck, but Naf turned and punched him square in the face. Blood streamed from the bully's nose. Grab him, the bully screamed but his companions were no longer interested in grabbing him. Nap stepped toward the bullies. They stepped back. Get away from me, he said. The bullies eyed each other, then turned and ran. Victor closed his iridoscope and returned to his work. He stretched the fingers of his newly repaired arm and tapped them on his disc in satisfaction. Okay, so that ending is a great example of why Victor thinks like human emotions are a weakness, right? This is like, this is like not a good example though. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, he's like, okay, in this case, if I take the fear out of you and you confront your bullies, then you're going to, you know what I mean? They're not going to be your bullies anymore. But, like, if you take away the fear in, like, another scenario, it might not go so well. Do you know what I mean? Like, he feels satisfied that, like, oh, yeah, here's another example of me proving that taking away human emotion is a good thing. And also, showing this little kid who now might come back because he might want to permanently get rid of it. Um because of the fact that it went so well in this little situation. It, I don't know. It was a good story because I I love getting to be able to have a conversation with Victor here and hearing some of the things he said about the human emotion, which I agreed with in a little bit of a sense, like a lot of the weaknesses. I mean, but that's what makes people human, right? Are some of these weaknesses that he mentions. I don't know. Victor's kind of becoming a very interesting character from what I'm getting here with the story and biography. 
you know, he's interesting in Arcane, but I am definitely liking, like, this is, like, future Victor. And I would like to see him become this in the future. It's pretty cool. All right, everybody, we're checking out Victor's gameplay abilities. His gameplay spotlight is 12 years old, so we're definitely not going to check that out. Obviously, it's been updated since then. So we're looking at roll as being mage and high difficulty for him. Okay, is that our first high difficulty? I don't know if it is or not. All right, so looking at the passive abilities, can't display this ability in video format. Interesting. All right, so for his passive ability, we have glorious evolution. Victor can augment his basic abilities when he gets kills on enemies. Okay, we're not quite sure what that means just yet. Let's move on to the Q. Siphon power. Victor blasts an enemy unit dealing magic damage, gaining a shield and empowering his next basic attack. Augment Siphon Power Shield is increased by 60% and Victor gains bonus move speed after casting. So that's if you decide to augment your Q. So basically this ability is him using the like the laser thing and then I see the little bonus move speed that we're getting as well. Interesting. Next up is the W Gravity Field. Oh, his abilities seem just so odd already off the bat. Victor conjures a heavy gravitational field that slows enemies in its radius. Enemies who stay within the device for too long are stunned. Augment, Victor's non-periodic spells apply slow to enemies. Okay, I can already see why Victor is probably high difficulty because of the fact that his abilities are kind of like not straightforward, I would say. All right, moving up, we got E, which is the death ray. Oh, there's the laser. Victor uses his robotic arm to fire a chaos beam that cuts across the field in a line, dealing damage to all enemies in its path. Augment, an explosion follows the death ray's wake, dealing magic damage. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, little fire damage or whatever afterwards looks really cool. Yeah, that looks really cool, killing those minions. All right, and what's the ultimate? Chaos Storm. Let's look at the video for it first. Okay, so he just moves it around. He controls it while it's going off. Interesting. Victor conjures a singularity on the field, which deals magic damage and interrupts enemy channels. The singularity then periodically does magic damage to all nearby enemies. Victor can redirect the singularity. Augment the Chaos Storm moves 25% faster. So wait, are you standing still while you're ulting though? That seems a little odd to me if that's the case. Or I mean, I guess you could probably move while doing it, but that's that seems like a, a difficult ultimate. We'll have to, um, you guys will definitely have to let me know in the comments. He seems like a high difficulty player for sure, but does that make him good or bad? You guys let me know. Luckily, we did find that there is a single cinematic, as far as I'm aware, for Victor, which is the Legends of Runeterra trailer. So let's check this out. Hmm. Augment. Okay, let's look at his card. Four mana, two four, augment. So when you play a created card, grant me plus one. And then it says round start, create a hex core upgrade in hand and then level up when you've played eight plus created card. Oh, that's a lot of cards to play before he levels up, I feel like. I don't know how fast that can go. Okay, so you get like three choices at the beginning. That's kind of cool. That's actually a really good card when you get like a bunch of, like when you create cards in hand, it's always a good card. Oh, the laser, I love it. Wouldn't it be sick if we end up seeing this in um, season two of Arcane, like the the full suit for Victor? Do we think it happened that fast? I don't know. Death Ray. All right, I want to see the level up animation. I'm curious. Oh. Whoa, whoa, that was actually kind of unique and creative. They augmented the card itself. That was such a cool and unique level up. Let's look at that again. Yeah, like they're adding things to the card. What? That's kind of cool. I really like that. All right, so now he's a four minute three five augment still. You created, or your created cards cost one less. So, and then you still create a hex core upgrade in hand. So they all cost cheaper, and he gets a uh, plus one, plus one. Cool. Really unique level up animation, I feel like. Iterative improvement. Cool. Only thing I wish is that it was longer, but very good. 
All right, no way. Victor, for being an older champion, does not have very many skins. My guess is maybe he's not too popular of a character. I have no idea. You guys let me know about that in the comments. All right, so he has seven skins here. I guess I'm going to just pick my favorite out of the seven. I think it's too much to do a top three. So let's just try to figure out what our favorite skin is here. Let's look at the original, and I want to look at it in 3D. So getting a good glimpse of the original here. Oh, it's not as like orange as they make you believe in the splash art. You get the little orange detail here throughout like the uh the augmentation on the left hand side of his body and i guess the eyes but yeah it's not as like orange as it makes it seem i think he looks pretty cool moving on we have full machine this also released the same year so 2011 let's look at this it looks like he's just like a c3po version of himself i mean it's more like brass than i feel like gold okay i mean it's got some cool aesthetics to it i kind of like the the cape and like the green that they've added to him mm, and the helmet the helmet's kind of like i don't know the helmet might be kind of cooler i do think the helmet might be cooler the staff i don't know about everything else though i feel like it's pretty even to the original but maybe a little bit better all right next up is prototype okay let's check this out oh i actually kind of like the version of him maybe without the helmet and i do like the red i think the red's pretty cool in my opinion the goggles as well I feel like this is like the unfit. Yeah, because this is called prototype. I was gonna say, I feel like this is the unfinished version of his augmentation until he finally gets there fully. But I think it's still pretty cool because you get to see like kind of how it started. You kind of almost get a little bit of lore with the skin. So that's pretty cool. All right, I'm 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 expecting like a big jump up in skin here. Okay, man, not really creator. Let's take a look at this. All right. Ooh a little bit oh he's got like a big like screw on his uh chest here that oh okay the laser's a little different looking it's a little bit more i don't know noxus i guess not not really though because that helmet isn't very noxus or maybe it kind of is the laser's pretty cool i'm assuming it extends up and then becomes like comes out as a laser and it just sits on his back when it's like that because it's so heavy and big maybe other than like the big screw in the front's a little weird i know it's a part of his you know his augmentation and everything i think it looks okay i do like the cape it's pretty like menacing and evil looking but i think i like the other ones better all right here we go it looks like there's a big gap in maybe release dates of skins here we have the death sworn victor Ooh, okay now this is a big change up this is kind of what I was looking for. I feel like, I guess, we're getting a little away from, like, looking like Victor at this point. Clearly, this, you know, this is supposed to be here. But I like the the concept of it. I like that he's, like, almost like a Death Reaper kind of, I guess, Death Sworn kind of person. Um, and, you know, with the little laser. It, it's a nice theme. I would almost say this is, like, a Halloween-themed Victor, almost. Which is kind of cool, because you would want to have, like, a Halloween-themed Victor, possibly. I like it. It's a little bit more like, um, like a Viego skin, I feel like. it. I don't know if it was going along with that theme. I don't know if I've seen any other Death Sworn skins. But, you know, it's good. I don't know yet if it's the fave. I tend to really like it when they stick to, like, still looking like the character itself. So that's why I'm a little wary of the Death Sworn. But let's see. Next is Psyop. So, like, the splash art kind of looks like him. Let's see the actual... We got different chromas with this one. See, like, this one still looks like it's Victor. But it looks like a more... Mm, like, it's giving me, like, Terran from StarCraft or, like, futuristic soldier kind of... I kind of like this. I like the the little ball at the top. I don't know if he does anything like cool animations with that. Let's go to different chromas. I want to see some different colors here. I like that. Yeah, like this one's pretty cool looking. It looks like a better version of the original skin for him, in my opinion. So, so far, I think I'm liking PsyOps the most, but we'll make our final decision later. And we only have one more left. It's high noon. Okay, there was a high noon that I really liked recently. Let's see if we end up liking high noon, Victor. Ooh, yeah i think this works again it's almost a little too like it kind of is a little too far not looking like victor because it just fully doesn't look like him anymore there's no like robotic augmentations to him he kind of just looks like a high noon character with a big shoulder pad and a laser right so i feel like it's not looking like victor as much as it could but I do really like this one. I want to see some of the other chromas because the blue might not be my fave. Oh, like the red and like the, the steel colors are kind of cool. I do like that. Let's go with like black. I guess that's not really black. But yeah, like I like this color. I think High Noon is actually going to be the favorite here, guys. Again, it doesn't look like him so much. 
but it still does in a sense. It's like almost looking like Victor in my in my eyes, but it has this really cool aesthetic of the high noon stuff. And it seems like the high noon skins are very, very popular. All right, for the trivia, it says Victor's robotic hand from the prototype skin can be seen in the video for the Mac version of League of Legends. Oh, okay, that very old Mac version trailer. And then it says Victor's dance references the Melbourne Shuffle, a dance originating from Australia. And then a side-by-side -side comparison can be seen. And then Victor was the first champion who had a unique item available only for him. It was the prototype hex core sharing this feature with Callista. Now, is this item still in the game? You guys let me know in the comments or have they added more champions that I'm, I'm assuming there are more champions that now do have a unique item for them. Uh, it says Victor was just the first. All right, guys, unfortunately on the Phantom Wiki, a lot of the background stuff is stuff we've actually already read. So we're going to actually just start off with the appearance for Victor. Victor's left arm is a four-fingered mechanical prosthesis. His other limbs may be prosthetic as well or simply armored. He has a shoulder pauldron on his left and a deep blue cloak that is red on the inside covering the other shoulder. Uh, his right hand wears a gauntlet and around his waist is a turquoise covering. On his left leg, he wears a brace for support. A third arm extends from his back fitted with a high precision power, high power laser. Very cool that we see the brace support on his left leg like we do in the show. And then personality pre-augmentation uh, personality says Victor had an obsessive idealistic personality and was a workaholic. He was a self-described methodical, logical, and thorough person and is implied to previously have been emotional. He was interested in how tech maturgy would or, or could help society, right? It's that emotional part though that he wants to get rid of. So then post augmentation, following his efforts to improve himself, his obsessive tendencies heightened and reportedly is now less capable of emotion than before. His previous interest developed into a mission he has devoted his life to. Victor has shown little regard for free will and autonomy when dealing in matters of life and death. He believes he is doing what is right and is generally benevolent, but uses ethically dubious methods to achieve desired results. All right, for abilities, there's only two. It says Inventor, a brilliant mind. Victor has a long list of achievements in the field of techmaturgy and engineering. Examples of the mechanical marvels credited to his ability include Blitzcrank and himself. Augmented, being mechanically augmented, Victor is reportedly no longer vulnerable to most human emotions or weaknesses. The extent of this is unconfirmed as he appears to still be susceptible to death. Yeah, so really he just has the abilities of being super smart and augmenting himself like that. That's straight up it. But that's kind of like, I mean, that's kind of like Iron Man. I guess I don't think Victor's smart or I mean, uh, rich though. But anyways, I'm actually kind of curious because of the whole Blitzcrank thing. I wonder what Blitzcrank's lore even is going to be be when we do Blitzcrank in the future. I don't know. I mean, here we go. We have a big paragraph for Blitzcrank. It says, note the following description will prioritize the facts as listed in Victor's biography as opposed to Blitzcrank's, given that this is Victor's wiki page. Oh, so there might be some like contradiction on Blitzcrank's. The only notable conflicts would be in Blitzcrank's origins and the reasons for their separation, where Blitzcrank's biography states he was an abandoned golem given sentience through the means of a Hextech crystal. Victor's biography describes events differently. Blitzcrank also credits the parting of their ways to a chem baron. In terms of matters omitted, Blitzcrank does not seem to be involved in the events in Piltover between Professor Stanwyck and Victor. So maybe that's just because it's coming from Blitzcrank's point of view, but you would think there would be like commonality with the biography of Blitzcrank. Like when did Blitzcrank's uh, champion come out after Victor? I assume it came after Victor, right? So... Yeah, I'm just curious how long afterwards. And then Blitzcrank was a custom-built golem constructed by Victor in order to help in the cleanup efforts following a devastating chem spill in Zaun. He grafted a sophisticated series of cognitive loops and existing automatic technology, which formed the basis of Blitzcrank's intelligence and later unintended sentience. The two worked together to better the lives of those affected by the spill. Unfortunately, their efforts failed to prevent more deaths, and so the two parted ways. Later in Piltover, Professor Stanwyck claimed Blitzcrank as his own invention. Victor challenged him, but backed by no one, he lost the case. The two currently have no reason to be unfriendly with each other. They have no reason to be unfriendly with each other, I guess because it's not Blitzcrank's fault that, you know, the claim over Blitzcrank's invention was, you know, yeah. It was really Jace and Stanwyck. And then Jace and, his, and Victor are ex-colleagues and current enemies. They disagree over many topics relating to ethics and science most pertaining to free will, which we very much saw like building in the second half of the show. And I love that they, I think they did a great job and I didn't know anything about, you know, the, the, the uh, disagreements between Jace and Victor until, you know, obviously we got later into the show, but very cool that they're like building that um, rivalry, I would say. 
Okay, so in terms of stuff that we may have missed, it looks like there's a comic called A Perfect Life Closed Circuit. It looks like it's Echoes. Um, based on the artwork, it looks like it's Echoes comic. And I assume Victor just shows up at some point in some of those. They, of course, have Arcane TV series and then the short story we already read. Just a little bit of trivia. It says Victor's lore resembles a lot that of a famous Serbian-American inventor, Nikola Tesla. Okay. Professor Stanwyck stole credit for Victor's creation. Blitzcrank. Similar to that was Tesla, where Thomas Edison stole credit for a lot of Tesla's work, such as the well-known Edison light bulb that Tesla made during his time working for the famed American inventor and Guglio, uh, Goog and Guglielmo Marconi for stealing credit for the creation of the radio. Okay, I don't know how to say that name. Victor's own abilities took inspiration from Tesla's work that were never truly realized, like the death ray, gravity device, magnetic shielding, and ionic storms. That's cool. I didn't think of that um, connection there, but I, I can see the similarities between him and Tesla, I guess. Oriana is listed as Victor's rival. Okay, this could be due to her unique construction that equals Victor's technology and power, or because people wrongly identify her as an example of what Victor is striving for, when in fact Victor is striving for living technology, which Oriana is not. Yeah, the only thing I know about Oriana is she's like a full robot AI. I don't, I don't know. She's just like full robot. She's not like a real person, right? And then despite being heavily augmented, Victor still enjoys drinking sweet milk. <laughs> Does he drink sweet milk in the show at all? I wonder if they'll incorporate that later. All right, guys, we're going to check out the Legends of Runeterra special interactions starting first. And then we'll move on to the, I think he only has like old voice lines. They haven't done an update for his voice lines or anything like that. And we'll see if there's anything else. But so far, I think we just have Legends of Runeterra special interactions and some extra voice lines. Once I stamp papers, now faces... Our goals are greater than petty violence. Okay. They said I can be whoever I want. Mechanized you mimic. already are, and so much more. Okay, so these are like some of his creations, you I feel like. You still cling to flesh and fur? Even the greatest mind likes pets. Is that a cat? Beauty and life. Okay. Efficiency and efficacy interesting i feel like that sums him up right efficiency and efficacy Beauty very and life. uh very good voice line i feel like efficiency and efficacy you know the fundamentals of space time only apply to realities oh my dimensions right oh my okay you have my attention shiny child shiny child <laughs> okay Impossible! Years of empirical evidence! <laughs> oh. Do not make me harm you, small child. <laughs> you! <laughs> Zoe. You are not yet complete. Armed gearhead. Sure, but I'm gonna stay a little me, right? Mm, the power great of the question. immortal sun. Progress will make men into gods. Hmm. Order, entropy, a never-ending cycle. Okay, Heimerdinger. Entropy is an unacceptable outcome. Interesting. Behold me, ow, hairless apes. Oh my All goodness. All evolution will converge to machines. All evolution will converge to machines. See, There's I don't know. always room for supper. Okay, the here we go. The needs of flesh are the enemies of intellect. There another, I another voice line that I feel like kind of sums them up. He is that name. The human mind takes time. A mm -hmm. great mind must never idle. Mm, that's fair. A vision of progress brought to life. Ah, okay. yes. Perfection. One step closer. But I feel like, is he really pushing towards perfection? Hmm. I will iterate and succeed. You can I definitely see his obsessive side in these voice lines, I right? I must yeah, like exactly right here. Improve. I must advance. I must improve. Necessary. Hmm. Three with two All right, let's go ahead and find some other voice lines in here. Hey, it's the boss man. Boss Remind man. me to upgrade your thought processors. Uh, uh. Join the glorious evolution. Oh yeah, there's I the glorious evolution. Zero regrets. Okay, so somebody that's happy about their augmentations. Flesh is a weakness we must shed. Mm. What do you know of shedding? <laughs> Join the glorious evolution. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, the man with the glowing beam. The man with the glowing beam. I Sums him up. Unleashed. I'm curious. I'm very curious about this Nyan android person. Join the glorious evolution. Ballistic bot. Who's this ballistic the bot? Flesh bags will bow, great maker. Great maker. What do I do? 
Called him Great Maker. Okay, so I assume Ballistic Bot was created by him. What about Look Mechanized you. Mimic? You could use a change. Humanity needs a leader of superior intellect. Mm. And one with an iron fist. Ooh, that's kind of interesting that she said that, which you know, I feel like was obviously relating to Victor. Whoa, is that what I think it is? An optically focused high intensity sparkle beam? Sparkle beam. Uh, Say yes. Death ray. <laughs> the future is made of metal. Like starry metal? Bubble metal? Pink metal? Sparkly metal? <laughs> I remember these because of Zoe's voice lines. The of the glorious evolution. What does Zoe have to say about oh that? Gosh, I'm <laughs> Great. Victor, he's so boring. He doesn't even like pink or cake. Hmm. He probably actually doesn't. You will have no cake. <laughs> you are wait, 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 wait. I feel like that's so unlike Victor. Okay, we're gonna accept fart face, but that's that was good. All right, guys, we're gonna go see if there's any more voice lines that we can find from Legends of Runeterra because I feel like there's gotta be a little bit more interactions with him and other people. We'll go take a look. But anyways, I want to talk about these for just a little bit. I love that we get to see like in some of the voice lines where he's kind of just talking about himself or we're talking with himself. He he very much we see that like obsessive side of like. I must advance or I must improve. There needs to be always like work needs to be done. He has this idea of like, he always needs to be working. He needs to be improving things no matter what. And he still sees, he has this idea that flesh is weakness. And I feel like, you know, like that's ingrained in his head because he uses like logic and empiric evidence, empirical evidence, I think is like how he decides what is true and what isn't. And I thought it was a little interesting when Zoe brought up to him so I don't remember what it was, but like the fact that he's like, all my empirical evidence is wrong when she brought up like this idea. And I feel like that kind of shows that Victor's probably wrong with a lot of the way he thinks and a lot of the research he's done. But anyways, I'll stop you and let's go look if there's any other voice lines. Okay, so I did find this video where it's Victor's interactions with other champions. They are League of Legends quotes. So let's go ahead and listen. You forget whose money made you what you are, Victor. Hmm. The red dot belongs to you. <laughs> okay, Tell so we're just getting what they say to Victor. Third arm that makes you extra glorious. Ooh. Oh, your revolution is so quaint. Ooh. Oh man, Victor would be pissed to hear that. I do like that we're just getting their side. That's fine because I do want to see what other people say about him. Your revolution has ceased to be useful. Hmm. You have become an obstacle to progress. Oh. Time to remove you. That's the exact thing that he wants to do is Never progress. Never go full machine. That was glorious. Yes, yeah, he like Camille. That makes sense to have interactions with Change her. Change or feel my God's wrath. Mm. You're everything wrong with Zahn. Never oh. go full robot. Wow, Echo I'll coming in. I'll never be like this guy. Okay. Progress is essential to survival, but not like this, Victor. Wow. Yeah, like this nobody agrees with him. Evolution, it will not be our Not fate, a Victor. single person. They all find it to be just like so absurd. Gives way oh. As I say that, we got Urgot coming in with his freaking crab legs. Humans, there will be no one left to appreciate your work. I mean, that's fair, but he still wants to keep a Three little human. No claws. I mean, he's got a laser, Warwick. Good enough. Okay, I really enjoyed those. It was really cool. I feel like we get an idea of what other people think of Victor. And a lot of people are kind of just bashing him and his ideas, I feel like, which makes him unique. And, like, he's the only one that really feels the way he feels about the human flesh and the emotions and things like that. But still, let's go ahead and see if there's any more. Okay, what do we got? The future Caitlin. is steel and science. There's good in people, Victor. Don't forget that. The future is steel. Oh, right, and Jace. Hello. The future is what we make it, Victor. Whoa, is that what I think it is? An optically focused okay, we've heard that one. sparkle beam? It is a death ray. The okay, time of machines is now. Not if I have anything to do with it. Stop right there. Okay, Flesh then. is a weakness we must shed. If only your ethics were as strong as your conviction. Mm. Victor? He's so boring. You will have no cake. 
<laughs> I love hearing the it power again. Of the immortal sun. I don't understand this one. Why do they even have an interaction? I feel like kind of odd. You have my attention, shiny child. Order, entropy, a never-ending cycle. Okay, and the rest are just repeats, so we don't need to get into those. So yeah, I was gonna say, what, why don't we have any more voice lines with Jace? So I'm really hoping, like, I mean, Victor's kind of an older champion that I feel like maybe needs a little bit of an update. You guys let me know in the comments about that, but I feel like, you know, we just got the Skarner, you know, visual update. I don't know if they've started a poll yet for the next champion that they're gonna do a visual update for. You guys let me know if that's a thing that they do, like, pretty regularly, but... I feel like Victor might be, you know, he, he kind of needs something because he does feel kind of old and a little outdated. And especially with the Arcane show and him being in that, maybe they need to like, I don't know, mix things up a little bit for him. I mean, I think his lore works just fine, but I'm still like, like the whole Victor and Jace thing, I think works, but I think there needs to be more voice lines and stuff to like interact with these two. All right, guys, last but not least is the final, like the League of Legends voice lines that Victor has. These are nine years old, um, so they're just, you know, they're still in the game and everything. But let's go ahead and listen to all of these. He doesn't have any updated voice lines besides these. Inferior constructs. Mm. They are obsolete. Okay, okay. Relinquish the flesh. Mm. Destroy, then improve. He almost sounds like he's got an the Eastern European failure. accent here. Adapt or be removed. I am the first of many. Metalist first of many. Perfection with utmost efficiency. Analyzing approach. Embrace See, that's very robotic, progress. man. Mm. Pave the way. Function over form. Function Always over form. Soon change. Submit to my designs. Mm. Still can fix all your flaws. Okay, get a laugh. <laughs> Mm. My opponents need to be upgraded. Upgraded. Come on. Kitulia, huh? That is the deal. What? Uh, keep your hand to yourself. What? Listen what is this joke? I have important. Uh, this is why I can't take you nice places. Consume. <laughs> Consume. Okay, these are weird. Behold, true power. Mm. <laughs> he sounds a little villainous here, I feel like course yeah it's got a lot of laughs that's good all right all right so let's stop it there all right guys let's talk about him and victor just in voice lines and just talk about victor overall so i really like victor because i think he's a great character in the tv show arcane right like i think he's really cool in that show and i can i like to see where they take him in the show and like him eventually getting this he could be a pretty cool like i don't know i don't want to call him a main villain in the show or a side villain but i feel like we really need multiple seasons i think to flesh this out or i think season two of arcane would be a great opportunity for them to like really push the victor timeline and um and like get him towards this i want to hear your guys's thoughts on that specifically i mean i understand victor's point of view right of like you know he's got the idea that like humans like most villains in in pop culture right are like oh humans are weak or humans make mistakes or humans are too emotional right like that's their weakness but obviously like you know that's obviously all our strength as well and so he's obviously gone down the path of thinking you know get as rid of much flesh as possible and that's the weakest part we got to go more robotic which I guess I understand, but you know, I don't know. He He's also doing it in a sense of like augmenting and helping people with like broken legs or degenerative diseases or helping people in Zon. So I do like that aspect of it. Like he's sort of doing good things, which is making him kind of an interesting character. And he's kind of like that in Arcane. Like you can tell Victor wants to help people. You can tell he's like overall, I think a good person. But he's a complex character. He's for sure a complex character, which is good. Uh, complex characters are always like super interesting, right? You know, voice lines, I do feel like, of course, they're a little bit lacking. It would have been nice to see a little bit more when it came to the, uh, the Legends of Runeterra voice lines. I feel like there wasn't too, too much there. These obviously need to be a little updated. So maybe with the Arcane show and the popularity of Victor, maybe like he becomes super popular in season two. Maybe, I mean, this is high hopes, right? Or like this is low probability that this happens. 
But maybe with like, if he becomes super popular in season two because of his arc in season two, maybe they'll be like, okay, we got to rework Victor in, in League of Legends because people are going to start playing Victor more or something, right? I don't know. So we'll have to see what happens with that. In the future for Victor, I think he's pretty good where he's at. Uh, he's one of the Zonite champions. He's kind of doing his thing in Zon. He's augmenting people. He's augmenting himself. I don't think he's like having too much of an impact down there. Like he's not, you know, he's not invading Piltover or anything. So I feel like he's kind of content down where he's at unless he starts pushing his agenda a little bit further out into the world of Runeterra. I think he's totally fine where he is in the world of Runeterra, just being in Zon, augmenting people that I think are accepting it. He's not doing it without people's permission as far as I'm aware, everything that we've read. So as long as he doesn't go any further than that, I think we're good with where he's at in terms of lore. Maybe they'll add some stuff in the show, which would be really cool to see him do other things. Uh, but other than that, guys, I want to hear from you guys in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts of Victor. Victor is a pretty old champion, so I'm sure a lot of you or some of you have at least played him or had been fans of Victor at some point in your life. So let me know, you know, anything you like about Victor. And please leave a thumbs up on the video, guys. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.